This video will contain spoilers on all things Twin Peaks and also from Lost Highway. So if you aren't caught up on all of Twin Peaks and or if you haven't seen the film Lost Highway, you probably shouldn't watch this video. So viewers, please be warned. The spoilers are about to begin. Dick Morant is dead. This is Philip Jeffries, right? S someone broke in and taped us while we slept. But Dick Morant is dead, isn't he? Philip. Why didn't you want to talk about Judy? Uh, Dick can't be dead. Who told you he was dead? Who is Judy? You've already met Judy. I can take care of the problem. Like that. No, well, I'm fine, Mr. Eddie. I mean it, Pete. Like that. Heads I win. Tails you lose. year is this? Dick Laurent is dead. So I recently watched Lost Highway for the first time in many years, and the striking similarities with the new Twin Peaks are extraordinary. This isn't breaking news, of course. In fact, most of Lynch's movies have an uncanny ability to establish unique moods and atmospheres that seem largely interconnected, but Lost Highway and the new Twin Peaks seem especially well-connected. For starters, they both contain a lot of visual similarities when it comes to imagery. The red curtains. Fire. Smoke. Mirrors. Dark spooky roads. Coffee, phones, video recording equipment, live musical performances, and an uneasy electrical presence represent just some of these overlapping visual cues that are vintage Lynch. But the layers of similarity run much deeper than mere imagery. There are more compellingly dynamic layers beneath that initial surface. We've met before, haven't we? I don't think so. Laura. You got the wrong house, mister. Where was it you think we met? At your house, don't you remember? You're saying you're not Laura Palmer. Laura who? No. No, no, I don't. Are you sure? Of course. So the name Laura Palmer means nothing to you? As a matter of fact, I'm there right now. As strange as it sounds, I think you're a girl named Laura Palmer. The parts in Lost Highway, especially those that involve Fred, the opening portions of the movie and the ending, those parts in particular remind me an awful lot of the Carrie Page realm. They both have this almost omnipresent, eerie, unsettling mood where things are not quite what they seem. Fred and Carrie both almost seem to live in a waking nightmare, where they each seem to be compartmentalizing things to a surreal degree where self-preservation acts as a driving force. The similarity in tones is striking, and this is all intertwined with the oft-explored Lynchian experience with duality. Laura uh. and Carrie, Fred and Pete, Cooper and Mr. C, and Richard, Fred and Carrie, and then, of course, Renee and Alice. We met at our place 
place called Monks. We became friends. He told me about a job. She speaks her last words to them. I'm like the blue rose. I met this guy at a place called Mokes. We became friends. He told me about a job. Is that you? Or both of them you? I'm not me. I, I'm not. I'm not me. That's me. She smiles, then dies, then disappears before their eyes. <laughs> Lost Highway was Lynch's first feature film following Fire Walk With Me, which followed the cancellation of Twin Peaks. So in a very real sense, Lost Highway feels like a continuation of some of those same themes that weren't fully explored. This, in turn, I believe were themes that were then again further evolved with the triumphant return of Twin Peaks. Twin Peaks originally concluded on the cliffhanger ending of Agent Cooper's doppelganger in some unholy alliance with Bob. I'm not sure if Renee and Alice represent Lynch's earliest exploration of tulpas as opposed to doppelgangers, but if you view the chronology of Twin Peaks ending, Fire Walk With Me, and the triumphant return of Twin Peaks, it certainly feels that way in the greater context of what we saw with Renee and Alice. Put differently, Renee and Alice remind me an awful lot of the various versions we see of Diane, where I tend to believe every version of Diane we saw was manufactured. I'm not sure if my interpretation here is correct, but Renee Alice definitely feels like a deeper exploration of these themes. Lynch never got to fully explore this with Twin Peaks, until he could. Of course, Lynch had more time to fine-tune these ideas between Lost Highway and The Return, but we'll save a Mulholland Drive discussion among others for another day. It's almost as if Lynch loved this idea of doubles, be it doppelgangers or tulpas or some other undefined variety. So after Twin Peaks... He dedicated a script to this idea with Lost Highway, where he also happened to introduce this idea of a time loop, and he then revisited all these themes in season three. Dick Morant is dead. year is this? Dick Laurent is dead. <laughs> Lynch's exploration of duality also extends beyond the concept of doubles, tulpas, or doppelgangers. Bob and Leland. Renee and the Mystery Man. Fred himself and the Mystery Man. This also extends to Laura and Renee. Or is it Carrie and Alice? And then the overall presence of mysterious entities in general, along with extraordinary places that have profound presence in their own right. And then, of course, we have the actor connections between Phil and Pete Martell, as well as Pete and Red. Could there even be some loose connection between Lost Highway's Pete and Red from Twin Peaks? Red is, after all, a magician. Incidentally, have I ever mentioned how much I love the fact that Pete Martell got to go fishing in the new timeline? What'd you change it for? I like that. Well, I don't. Grand Theft Auto. I like that. The log ladies. 
stole my truck. I won't pretend to understand Lynch's creative process. It's difficult enough to try and make sense of the art, let alone the mind of the artist behind it. But like many diehard fans of Lynch's efforts as a filmmaker, I am one of those viewers who is fascinated by the fact so many of Lynch's movies seem to have this connected vibe that makes them uniquely Lynch. After watching Lost Highway for the first time in many years, and for the first time since the release of season three, you can definitely see these ideas grow and evolve and flourish chronologically. It's a beautiful thing, and even though Lynch oftentimes re-explores similar themes, he always manages to keep them fresh and intriguing with an untold sense of forward momentum. Those who've watched any of my previous videos might be aware of the fact that I'm itching for more Twin Peaks. This is true, but I should clarify that statement. While I am and always will be itching for more Twin Peaks, I'm likewise really just itching for more artistic endeavors from Lynch in the capacity of a filmmaker. The itch for more Twin Peaks tops the list. And similarly, I'll always itch more for a series rather than a movie for the simple reason that that just means more material. But whether it's more Twin Peaks, more of something quasi-related, or more of something else entirely new, let's just say I'm still rather itchy. I originally intended this to be an episode about John Merrick and FBI Special Agent Dale Cooper, but at the last minute, in a rare spontaneous moment for me, I decided to watch Lost Highway instead. I still intend to explore that idea with Merrick and Cooper sometime fairly soon, and I'd also like to explore some of Lynch's other movies in the context of Season 3 sometime in the foreseeable future because it sure is fun to try and explore the overlapping Lynchian themes that seem to grow and blossom with time. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night.